Hey, how you doing? It's Tom, and it's the Tom's Radio Room Show. Did you hear that? Da 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 da. Whatever it was, some CW code on 360 hertz, not megahertz, not kilohertz, hertz. We've got our new U loop set up. It's just kind of hanging in my workshop. I haven't set it up outside yet due to the bad weather. And it's receiving, as you can see on the waveform there, there's a, quite a few signals coming in very weak. And I don't know what they are. There's some kind of beacon or something. This one is at, like I said, 360 hertz. I, um, I loaded up Fran. That's the... Um, option that you can use that will show you the database and it's using the uh, um, EIBI database, the full database, and it doesn't have anything on this frequency. It does have others, as you can see over here, and I'll zoom out here, whoops, uh, and then I need to move over. Let me go back here. Let me select uh, see if anything is on. There's BBC. Let me select that and I'll zoom out. Nothing there and a little bit off. I think that's 198. It's the BBC. And there's nothing there. It is 5 o'clock in the morning here in Clearwater, Florida. Probably not the best time to hear long wave. I don't know when the best time to hear long wave is. Maybe there's not a best time. I'm just learning about long wave signals, and I don't know much. I, I know there's a couple of long wave stations in Europe. I've never been able to receive them. Uh, there's several beacons in the United States. I think that's what Danny was listening to is some beacons throughout the United States. Uh, he did not get any broadcast from, like, Europe. Uh, I think uh, Rob741 told me uh, some time ago, maybe a year ago, he was playing with Longwave, and he did receive some broadcast stations. Very weak. Now, he's up in Massachusetts, I believe. So he's closer to Europe than I am, much closer. And he's on the east coast of the United States, where I'm on the west coast of Florida. Another disadvantage. But we're going to keep trying. You can see there's quite a few little tiny signals here. And I've been playing around with the controls um, to see what I can do to improve reception. Let me... Uh, sometimes when I try to close this, it closes everything. There we go. And close that. There, I got that out of the way. So I got the RF gain right now at maximum. I've been moving it up and down to see if there's any improvement. I think according to what I read in the SDR Uno, this is SDR Uno manual, and I'm using my RSP DX, which has this HDR mode, which is geared towards listening to low frequencies, low band frequencies. And uh, then you, you, what you do is you go up here under bands and you select HDR, which I have, and then you select what band you want to listen to. So I selected low, that's where I'm at right here, and it, it puts everything in the uh, that band, which is from zero to 500 hertz and centers it and then selects the right mode which I was uh, listening to AM maybe some of these beacons I should be using CW that might help the other thing is I'm not sure of is if it makes a difference between the antennas I'm using antenna A right now uh, Antenna C is, on this radio, is a B and C connector, so I'd have to have an adapter because 
um, the coax that comes with this U-loop antenna, it has the SMA connector. So I could experiment with that, which I'll try later. Um, matter of fact, I'm looking right now to see if I have... I do not, right in front of me, have a SMA to B and C adapter. I have to see if I've got one, otherwise I'll have to go through two adapters. So, uh, and you can see some of these signals are in. Eh. This one right here I was on, I think this was the one I was on. Maybe it was one down here. Let me uh, just tune to this thing for as weak as it is. And according to Danny, and that's where I got my inspiration is Danny on his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, What was I going to say? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, it's hell to get old. Um, what was Danny saying? I don't remember. Anyway. Um, oh, he was saying that a lot of these signals are um, very low, but the beauty of the U-loop antenna is it's very low noise. So, since the signals are very low themselves, you can get them to pop up out of that noise. Where if you use like my Megaloop antenna, it's amplified and it amplifies the noise, so these signals are swamped out by the noise. So let's try this one right here. I'll zoom in a little bit now. It's not marked. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, boy, it is weak. It's uh, 310 by 12. 11 or 12, maybe 11 and a half. Let's unmute it. Let me go 11, 311 and a half. Yeah, that's the center of it. I can hear it. I know you can't. I can hear it. It is code. Let me see what happens when I go to CW mode. Yeah. There it is. And we'll see if we hear the see the uh, Morse code signal. Nope. I thought I heard a da da da, whatever. So this is similar to what Danny heard, and he—I uh, haven't researched, but he looked up the frequencies that he found, and actually they were uh, beacons. There's another one over here. Let's try this one. The continuous signal. Let me turn that down a little bit. Let's take it out of CW mode. Yeah. I'll, let me turn the volume up and I'll move closer to the speakers. Okay, it's there. You can hear the da 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 which I don't read Morse code, so I don't know what it's saying. It's uh, probably the call sign for that beacon or something. Um, let me go back and I'll play with some of these filters, see if that helps any. I can distinctly hear it. It's getting actually getting a little stronger as time goes on. 
Let me try turning the gain down. Nope, that killed it. It's definitely there. And it's exactly on, let me mute here. It's exactly on 360. So I'll have to look up. Let me just try looking up real quick yeah, on, the, on the internet and see if it tells you what that is. Uh, 360 hertz. Uh, did I mean 360 hertz? Yeah, that's what I meant. No. Let's try 360 hertz frequency. Probably won't help. Uh, I don't know. Nope. Couldn't find anything. Okay. I'll have to look later. Let me go back here. Now, the other thing I can do is, let me get this back up, is uh, try a different piece of software. Let's close this. And we don't need this. Let's try SDR console. Sometimes SDR console actually does a better job of reception. We're going to pick the RSP DX. And we, oh, there's quite a bit of few signals there. There's the one at 360. No. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. Let me uh, turn up the volume. It sounds like it's only a couple of either numbers or letters in Morse code, because it's very short. And here I've got the EIB database down here, and it doesn't list anything. This I guess like this starts at 225. This database that I loaded, I don't know how old this database is, but you can see there's quite a few signals here. This one's pretty big. This is uh, 90 something. Let's turn the speaker back up. 92 maybe. No. Let me change the uh, the waterfall here. Another one. One eighty five. Oh, I got HDR disabled. Let's enable. I don't know what these numbers mean. I'm going to just pick a 500 kilohertz filter. Just going to pick that. Did I help any? Now this looks a little uh, more defined. They're way coming in. Let me uh, get closer so you can hear it. So it's definitely there. I have no idea what it is. It's at 360 hertz. Um, I didn't hear anything, or didn't see anything, down at 60 hertz, which is supposed to be out of Colorado, WWV. Let me uh, 
zoom out here a little bit so I can come down there to 60 hertz would be right in there where there's a funny signal there. Yeah, there's 60 hertz. Okay, well again, um, these software packages have uh, lots of variables you can play with. And uh, maybe if you have some suggestions of how I could maybe tune this radio and filters and stuff like that. Like I say, on this program, which is SDR console, um, under HDR, it has all these options, which I think are similar to, let me close this. And go back to SDR Uno. I think it's similar to these options. And I read the manual this morning about these options, and it's it's basically um, just determining how much of the spectrum they're showing you. Like if I start this, so I'm going from 60 to 500 hertz on low. If I pick full, it goes from about 100, and 100 to 1.7. And of course, now we're in, this is the medium wave band, so we're getting a lot of stuff in the medium wave band. Now, a lot of other stuff now is showing up here. And so if I, I don't think I can zoom yeah, I can zoom out. So let's go down to uh, 500, maybe even lower. I forgot how to, there we go. So let's go way down there. So there's 400 right there. That's, whoa, that's a strong signal. Let's see what that is. Oh yeah, that's, that's probably something from the medium wave. I'm guessing. I mean, it's so strong. Let me just unmute that. Maybe that's music. I wonder what that. Here again, I'm I'm really lost. That's at 410. That's boy. That's a long wave. I'm gonna have to listen to this boy. Look at man, that thing is super strong. I'm going to have to listen to this to see if it's a local station that's, you know, bleed over from medium wave or if it's really a long wave station. Okay, I'll do that. I'll report back to you. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm showing you something that's of interest and not wasting your time. If you haven't subscribed, that would be a nice thing to do. And have a great day. Bye-bye.